Toyota has been missing in action when it comes to EVs. Their first modern electric car, the BZ4X, was a complete flop, stumbling out of the gate and plagued by issues like wheels falling off, recalls, and a reputation for being a basic, featureless vehicle. This has also hindered Toyota's ambitions to launch an entire lineup of vehicles built upon the underwhelming BZ4X. Furthermore, the company is pursuing dead-end technologies like hydrogen for passenger cars, where stations are scarce and the cost to fill up the vehicle is even more expensive than regular gasoline. But now, under the leadership of CEO Koji Sato, Toyota is committed to making a complete U-turn and to pursue Tesla no matter what it takes. In a shocking twist, Toyota is harnessing its legendary lean manufacturing prowess to reinvent itself, starting with a new production line. However, the results reveal a striking similarity to Tesla's groundbreaking approach. And before we continue, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and have a look at our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and quarterly financial data going back up to 15 years, and it's all freely available. For many years, Toyota has been reluctant to invest heavily into electric vehicles and has fought the trend at every step of the way. They've even gone as far as to advertise against the adoption of EVs and instead have been putting their money into hydrogen vehicles such as the Toyota Mirai. Perhaps their 2012 venture where they introduced an early electric RAV4 in partnership with Tesla may have soured their electric vehicle efforts, especially after their partnership dissolved. However, in a stunning turn of events, Toyota has unveiled some new manufacturing processes specific to electric vehicles and aims to close the gap with Tesla in order to catch up on reducing the cost of production and increasing unit sales. Toyota is going back to basics, drawing insight from its past, to resurrect its lean production know-how. The Toyota Production System, or TPS, has been world-renowned and comprises of the company's management philosophy and best practices. Toyota invented the Kanban scheduling system to improve manufacturing efficiency, and now they're determined to apply this to EVs. However, one major lack of advantage that they now have is that Kanban and many of Toyota's success stories have been adopted ubiquitously in countless industries worldwide, specifically in manufacturing and in software. Tesla chief Elon Musk has been an avid student of Toyota's achievements and has pulled these learnings into Tesla's gigafactories along with his own practices in order to further improve output. Nevertheless, Toyota is coming into Tesla's home turf about a decade late, since they really don't have much in terms of purely electric vehicles in the marketplace. Tesla has roots in Silicon Valley, which shouldn't be overlooked given that it's the innovation hub of the world and flush with software development talent. During this time, Tesla has been able to refine its internal operations, including building up homegrown software that not only runs the vehicles, but also runs the factories themselves. That said, it doesn't mean Toyota can take note and try to copy back some of the things that Tesla has done. Toyota recently demonstrated its new die casting technology, where they're able to make large giga castings, something that Tesla has actually pioneered for use in electric vehicles. Tesla has been pushing the boundaries with Italian company Idra, whose CEO coined the term gigapress. However, Tesla does have additional requirements or a secret sauce that go into Idra's gigapresses that are destined for the US EV maker. Toyota, however, believes they have a new innovation in this space, which includes molds that can quickly be replaced, which they say can now be done in 20 minutes versus 24 hours normally. And this somehow leads to a 20% efficiency boost, suggesting that there's one day of downtime in every five day period. This seems to be a bit of a stretch and perhaps tries to reflect the rest of the industry not including Tesla, which doesn't have nearly this much downtime. 
Toyota's Gigacasting still needs to make its way into production vehicles, but is said to produce a large aluminum piece that merges 83 parts down to one. Now for the Gigapress, Tesla had to develop its own proprietary aluminum alloy, which allows it to skip the heat treatment that's traditionally used to boost the strength of the casting, but could also warp the material. While the composition of this material is available online, thanks to car specialist Sandy Monroe's analysis of the Model Y casting, it would be interesting to see if Toyota copied the constituents of the alloy or came up with something themselves. Nonetheless, in our last video, we highlighted several innovations that Tesla is working on, including sand cores, to speed up the design of these Giga casting molds. Meanwhile, Toyota is still trying to figure out Tesla's version 1.0 technology, which goes back to Elon Musk's constant reminder that the pace of innovation is what matters, as it continues to keep Tesla far ahead of the competition. Now what's more is that Toyota is also jumping onto this idea of building the vehicle in modular sub-assemblies. They showed off the front, the center, and the rear of the vehicle in three separate parts, almost exactly like what Tesla introduced in March of this year at Investor Day with the unboxed process. In order to allow operators to work on these large vehicle chunks in parallel and to increase operator density. This innovation will require a complete redo of the traditional assembly line since it will no longer be a linear process. This somewhat contradicts Toyota's subsequent inventions, or at least it's where it seems to deviate with Tesla's unboxed process. Toyota says it's creating self-propelled production lines where the vehicle is moving itself down the line, guided by sensors, which means that conveyor belts or other transportation robots can be removed from the process, thus cutting down greatly on production line cost and also allowing for greater flexibility. The production line can much more easily be moved elsewhere if needed. This certainly seems like a good idea for these reasons, although it does differ from Tesla's approach. The vehicle needs to be somewhat assembled for this self-propelled method to work, and so it looks like Toyota is using a skateboard design where this proves more suitable. However, in Tesla's case, with the structural battery pack, the battery comes in later through the floor of the vehicle with the seats already mounted on. And so in Toyota's case, the bottom of the vehicle might be assembled earlier in the production process, whereas for Tesla this seems to occur further downstream, which seems to make it a less valuable option. Toyota also just introduced some other innovations, but they appear to lag behind the current times. For instance, they unveiled a new technique to make bumpers look glossy without any paint. However, it does require hand polishing. Now this might make sense in a high-end vehicle with low volume, but Toyota rapidly needs to make up for lost time and to produce millions of electric vehicles just to maintain its current market share. They're the number one automaker in the world, producing 10 million cars per year, and yet only 0.3% of their production from 2022 was devoted to EVs. Hand polishing is nice, but it's not something that can scale. Elon Musk was criticized for many years, especially at the time when the Model 3 first came out, that he was over-automating the systems at Tesla. This turned out to be only partially true, he was over-automating just at the wrong time, when the Model 3 was critical for the company's survival. But now that Tesla has been much more stable for years, Elon Musk has had time to over-automate far beyond what was like in 2018. And so Toyota is up against something that's already highly computerized, meaning that they may need to step up their automation game, putting hand-polishing steps out of the question. Strangely, Toyota also talks about how they were able to take three decade old equipment used to process parts and now run it at night and on the weekends after being automated through robotics and 3D modeling, improvements Toyota said had tripled equipment productivity. Now perhaps better late than never, but given that this is for 30 year old equipment, it's likely intended for ICE vehicle parts. This may not be relevant for EVs. When Tesla bought the old Nummy plant in California, which is their Fremont plant today, and was previously owned by GM and Toyota, they had to make do with what they had, essentially converting this plant used to make ICE vehicles into electric. 
However, today, it's their most inefficient factory, since making ICE vehicles versus electric is vastly different. And so Toyota is still very much focusing on other parts of their legacy business, which is great, except that by the end of the decade, much of it may be obsolete, while instead they could be putting much higher focus into their electric vehicle business and automating that, which appears to be one of the most critical parts for long-term viability. Toyota is planning to produce 600,000 EVs per year by 2025. This would be up from 24,000 globally from last year. But by 2025, it's estimated that electric vehicles will have roughly 40% market share. This isn't out of the question, especially since the largest market, China, is already at 24% EV share, and the US is at about 15%. Because Toyota makes up a huge percentage of the overall worldwide car market, since they sell 10 million cars per year, which is over 10% of the world's cars, they could be drastically affected by changing consumer preferences. At their aggressive target of 600,000 EVs per year, requiring an insane 25-fold increase over the next two and a half years, that will still only be 6% of their sales. That's a stark mismatch with the expected average, which could easily be 40% share. This could be a major risk for their typical 10 million in sales. Toyota makes some great vehicles today, including gas and hybrid vehicles. However, their backlog is enormous on some of their plug-in hybrids, extending up to four years of wait time. And these vehicles have tiny batteries between about 13 to 18 kilowatt hours. So it's not a question of demand, it's a question of supply. If Toyota can in fact actually build and deliver fully electric cars, which will have much larger batteries. If they're having problems now, these could be exacerbated. In the United States, for example, they're only planning for their new battery pack factory to come online in 2025. So it doesn't look like Toyota is prepared to hit even their own targets. The company also just unveiled a new compact SUV based on the Beyond Zero series whose concept borrows some of the elements from Tesla's design. While the Beyond Zero series has been off to a rough start with the BZ4X, Toyota believes this next generation vehicle will help close the gap. However, between concept to production, a lot can change. And one of the main deciding factors for consumers is not just the look of the car, but also the technology that comes with and Toyota's software appears to be on a flip phone level compared to Tesla's advanced and refined technology. This is evident with their current vehicles, where even something as basic as navigation maps lack connectivity and require a USB stick for manual upgrades. Consumers would much prefer using their iPhones instead of the built-in outdated navigation system. And so a lot of work needs to be done in order to convince consumers that an electric Toyota will make sense in a playing field where Teslas are far more advanced in both software and hardware. Toyota's chief product officer, Kazuaki Shingo, told reporters on a tour at a Toyota plant in Japan that the strength of Toyota's manufacturing lies in our ability to respond to changing times. However, in the rapidly evolving landscape of electric vehicles, it's not just about adapting to change, but also staying ahead of the curve. Toyota has certainly made some shocking advances with their new Gigapress, modular parts, and self-propelled assembly line at a time when everyone thought that they were standing still on electric vehicles. But it's evident that they still have a mountain of catching up to do when compared to Tesla's cutting-edge technology in both software and in hardware. So do you think Toyota will successfully achieve its goal of producing 600,000 electric vehicles annually by 2025? Or is it merely emulating Tesla in certain aspects without the ability to fully integrate these innovations? Don't forget to watch my last video on Tesla's new Gigacasting 2.0. Please hit the like button and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.